the physical background of a resistor is defined by its material and its geometry. The material is the resistivity of the material, the resistivity of the conductor, and the geometry is defined by the length of the same conductor and the diameter of the conductor we are talking about. For DC signals, Ohm's law dictates that the voltage across the resistor is equal to the resistance times the current through the resistor. The symbol of a resistor with the European notation is typically drawn as a rectangle like this one. The voltage across it is indicated by the arrow pointing across it from one terminal to the other and the current through it, an arrow which is on the line on one of the pins of the resistor, defining the direction of a positive voltage and a positive current. Now for human beings, it is harder to understand things that are not visible or things that are physical, things that can be experienced through physical touch or through direct interaction. Now, unfortunately, in, in electrical engineering, things like voltages, currents, power, these are not physical objects that we humans can interact with or at least we shouldn't. If we interact with them, then it can be very dangerous. Therefore, I would like to introduce you to the analogy of hydraulics and electrical terms. Within hydraulics, you have the water pressure generated by a pump, as you would, for example, have in a heating system, in a house, or in the garden when you're watering your plants. Now, a valve, inside a water system can be represented in the electrical domain like a switch you can turn on or off the water flow and you can also turn the, the valve halfway down as you can close a bipolar transistor or a mosfet only halfway and only slightly conduct the electrical current now the electrical current is very similar to the fluid current to the flow of the water molecules inside the pipes. The pumps themselves are equivalent to a voltage source. And as long as the water pressure is static, we could compare it, for example, to a battery where the voltage also is static and is DC. Now for resistors. The length of a water hose is equivalent to the length of a resistor. And the diameter of the water hose is a physical representation of the diameter of the conducting resistive material. Now, the bigger the diameter of a water hose is, the more water molecules you can pass through at a given water pressure. And the longer the water hose is, the more water pressure you need to circulate the current around in your closed water system as we have on the left side over here. This is very equivalent to the voltages and to the resistors on the right side. The longer your resistor is, the more voltage you need to press the same amount of current through the resistor. So that explains the geometry of the resistor, the length and the diameter of the resistor or of the water houses. Now, what about the material? The material can be represented in the hydraulic analogy like sand inside the water house. The more sand you have inside, the more the water molecules would actually collide with the sand and the harder it is to press the water molecules through the sand, which is equivalent to the charges in a resistor and pressing those through the resistive material. So the more resistivity you have, the harder it is to press the electrons through the resistor. In this analogy, the water molecules are equivalent to the charges in the electrical model. Electrical charges can, for example, be electrons or can be ions or holes. 
Now, two slides ago, we have applied Ohm's law with a DC voltage and a DC current across a resistor. Now, in this equation here, we define the current through a resistor as an AC current. The equation sign here with an exclamation mark above means that this is not a derived size, this is a defined size. So here we are defining the current through a resistor as a cosinusoidal waveform with a positive phase B and an amplitude of uppercase I with the index R. Now, if we want to calculate the voltage across that resistor, we can apply Ohm's law with AC signals. The voltage across that resistor is the resistance with the upper defined current. And if we put the current into this equation, we can rewrite the whole equation as the uppercase letter R, the resistance, times the amplitude of the current, uppercase I index R, times the cosine wavefront omega T plus the phase V in the argument of the cosine. Now the same current and the same voltage noted down as a phaser adds the underscores and we're using the uppercase letters here already for defining the phaser. The amplitude of the phaser is the exact same as we had over here in the time domain for the amplitude of the cosine wave and the exponential function has an argument of phi, which is the same phase that we had over here in the time domain. The voltage with an underscore is the phasor of the voltage across the resistor and is equal to the resistance times the current through that resistor, which then putting the phasor from the current into that equation, inserting it here, gives us the resistance times the peak of the current F multiplied by the exponential function with the argument J and the phase V from the current. Now the impedance of a resistor, that is the uppercase letter Z with an underscore and the index R indicating that it's the impedance of a resistor is simply R. So the impedance of a resistor only is represented by a real part and has no imaginary part. The last equation on this slide repeats Ohm's law applied to a resistor with the two phasors, the voltage across the resistor and the current passing through the resistor. Finally, the graphical representation of the voltage across a resistor and the current through the resistor. On the left side in the time domain, and on the right side as a phasor diagram with the real part on the x axis, the j imaginary part on the y axis. For a resistor, the voltage and the current have the same phase. That means the peaks occur at the exact same amount of time. So do the zeros, and so do the minimums of the signals of both the voltage and the current. In the phasor domain, this phase, this equal phase for both the voltage and the current, it is represented by the angle drawn down here. The amplitude of the current in the time domain is represented by the y-axis value here and the resulting voltage amplitude dependent on which resistor value you're applying that current to is visualized on the y-axis in the time domain over here. In the phasor diagram, the length of the current represents the amplitude of the current, whereas the length of the voltage vector represents the amplitude of the voltage across the resistor.